Uh, what I'm going to talk about tonight is um, the dark and very, very, very dark history of the uh, system that we live in. We live in a system and there are, there are people who are very uh, powerful in this world who actually have think tanks that get together regularly on a regular basis and they uh, basically manufacture this society that we live in. It's a system. And this, what we live in, with all the stuff that you see, wars, famines, corruption, that's basically the end result of these think tanks that get together and, and produce this society that we live in. All right, so um, we look around us and we know, we know that there's something wrong because your neighbour next door is a nice person, your family are, are nice, people you work with are nice. People want to have a nice society where we can live in peace and just live and be free of wars. So you think, well, where's it coming from? Where is this a constant uh, tribulation that we have to go through? Now think 500 years back, if you think 500, if you think it, we haven't got it uh, so bad, well, these days, um, 500 years ago, the Catholic Church, this is a depiction of some of the, uh, the chambers of torture in the Inquisition. Now, you guys could easily be classed heretics and you could have been led to the Inquisition. Uh, so, you just think back to those days, the Inquisition and and the uh, Crusades and all the, uh, the Dark Ages and how much our brothers suffered, mankind suffered. And we see now that um, we know things are, are really gone pear-shaped. What's the origin of it? Well, I'm going to expose it. I'm expose it with a little bit of history. Um, <clears throat> the Catholic Church, the Roman cult, has been very, very, very busy in the last couple of thousand years. Starting with the, uh, the Julian dynasty, then the Flavian dynasty, then the Ant Ant Antons, the Ant Antonies, um, we, we had the empire. Rome was a republic, became an empire. Just like that, overnight, they killed Julius Caesar, bang, Augustus. It's an empire. This empire... <clears throat> is our enemy, as you will see, because it, it has morphed as it's gone through the ages uh, with the backing of the Roman cult and a very, very dark priesthood who, through their sorcery and evil and their papal bulls, they seal those papal bulls, they put a spell on them, they put them in their vaults, and what is in, written on those papal bulls goes. Why? Well, because they're sorcerers. And because when you make a claim of right, which in law means, hey, uh, these, these are mine. I'm, I'm claiming them. Well, it's, I've got the highest claim of right because it, they're in my hands. I brought them here. The evidence is there. So they're mine. What the Catholic Church did in 1302... Very, 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 very powerful date in history. Pope Boniface VIII. Very similar to my name, by the way. My name is Bonacci. And that is, bon means good. Now get this, right? Face means to do in Latin. Do gooder. This guy was a contemporary of Dante Alighieri. Dante Alighieri who wrote Paradise, uh, the, um, the, the um, someone help me, uh, the Divine Comedy. He condemned this guy to the bottommost parts of hell for how wicked Pope Boniface is, and you're going to see. This... <clears throat> There's his tombstone. You see the crown? It's a double crown. 
put that on because King Philip in France had a crown. And King Prince Philip was a nasty, nasty guy. He's the one who in 1307, get these dates, they destroyed the Knights Templar. They had to because they were rivals and they were doing things the right way, the original Knights Templar. That's when Philip and Clement, the Pope, after, after uh, Boniface, Uh, this is, they had Jacques de Molay in prison for seven years. They smashed every bone in his body. They blinded him with hot irons, roasted his testicles in oil. They did everything to that man with their little devices. This is, these, this is the sort of devices that the Roman cult has used for a long, long time. And they're still using them in a, in a spiritual sense in the courts. And I'm going to show you this. The courts are run by these people. Everything that happens in court is ecclesiastical. Everything. I know a few, a few of you know this, so it's not a surprise, but some of you may not. But this is... A, this, what I'm teaching tonight, I only got an inkling of three, three years ago. But... Um, the stuff from these websites, you might want to put these down. These, these are all linked to my website, universaltruthschool.com. So if you've got a pen, you might want to write this down. I'm leaving this up for a bit. But um, most of the information that I'm, I'm telling you, you can source here. And it's uh, Frank O'Collins in Sydney uh, runs these. And he's going to, um, well, he's... Basically, the, the information comes from here, so you can source that here. Now, back to Boniface, our little friend. So, he put that second crown on his head to up, do one up on Prince Philip. Uh, so, they got together, the Vatican and Prince Philip, and they destroyed the Knights Templar. But here, what happened in this year was this guy, um, Pope Boniface VIII, in 1302, created the first express trust in history. What's a trust? Well, the Crusaders were going off to Jerusalem, leaving their, their homes, their palaces and their riches behind. So they developed an idea. Le they, they, they would say to their most trusted friend, you, I want to hand over my estate to you in trust and I'm off to Jerusalem, I'm fighting for Christ. That's what the Crusades are all about, isn't it? <clears throat> That's another story. <clears throat> anyway, so when I come back, you're my best friend. You're the best person to, to give my property to in trust. So he becomes the trustee, the owner of the property. What would happen was some of these knights would come back and the guy that they, their best friend that they left these treasures with got used to the treasures and decided that they would keep them. And guess what? The courts would not support the, uh, the knights because the trustee had the right to keep the property. That's how the trust started. It worked. They worked for most people, but for some of them, they didn't get their property back. What happened was this guy and the Catholic Church always desiring to control, control, control with their inquisitions decided that they would create the first express trust in history. All right, that trust is called Unum Sanctum. What does the papal bull say that they created to stick in their vault and put their spell on that has cursed us so much, this unum sanctum? It says that all the world and all the souls in it are ours. Remember the right of claim? This is mine. Well, they, a claim of right. They made a claim of right. They rocked up, sitting on top of the world, look around, seeing all these people sleeping, 
got all these go gold in their vaults and all this power, and they said, we own the world. And so they do, because no one has challenged that. No one has challenged Unum Sanctum, this papal bull. It's in the vaults. And it's a curse on mankind, and I'll show you how. This was the first express trust in history. So they have claimed the whole world and all the souls therein. And you will see, by virtue of your birth certificate, that that is the title of your soul that they own in their registries. They have registered you. And that is the title to your soul. So what you're going to learn in the second half of this uh, presentation with Serena is how to collapse those trusts because it's the only way to get out of the system and claim your dominion as children of God, of the universe and not as their slaves, as people lost at sea, incompetent because that's how they consider you when, they, when you walk into court an incompetent, dead, with no soul because they own it and those black judges who are priests of Baal they, actually, they are ecclesiastical and I'll show you that after we go through a little bit more history. This is painful history um, because if anyone of you have done their history and, and read a lot, uh, you know, like through the Dark Ages, you'll know how much humanity suffered. Do you remember the Huguenots in France, the Lollards in Scotland, the Collegents, the Sicinians, the Anabaptists? The Waldenses, they started around this time and everything. These guys started the Inquisition at that time because people were waking up back then. But they killed that. Then 300 years later, 200 years later, the Renaissance, that came back through the hermetic wisdom that they were drawing from, from uh, Egypt via Plato, uh, Hermes, the Hermetica, which created all the geniuses that have ever existed because every genius has read the Hermetica because that's where the Bible draws all of its inspiration from. Michelangelo, they were weaned on the Hermetica. What happened? Well, we're going to go through a bit of history to show how, how they, they came down on that awakening too. That renaissance was squashed. This one ain't going to get squashed. This one, people are waking up. We shouldn't be angry about the evil that they represent. It's the fact that they are insane. They're insane. The elite families who control the Vatican and who, who are behind this corporation and it's the corporation of the Apostle Peter. Because Constantine, we can go earlier than this, we can go to 325, Constantine the Great. Supposedly, hundreds of years later, they found Constantine's donation. And that donation was written to his Pope Sylvester, to his, uh, Constantine was of course the Emperor, the Pope was Sylvester, and apparently Constantine uh, says to Sylvester in this... Uh, document Saint Peter is the apostle of Jesus that Jesus gave the kingdom of this earth to therefore we're going to ta uh, claim taxes based on that on the donation of Constantine we're paying taxes because of that fictional document guys all taxes to Rome and the, the elite families the insane Khazarian and Venetian black nobility families just like the Saxico the Gothas, Gothas that uh, the Windsor family false name. These are the black nobility family. Bankers, bullion brokers. There's a book called um, Babylon's Bankers. There's a chapter in there called Monotheism, Military, Money, and Monotheism. Military, Money, Monarchies. He has exposed that this gathering, this cabal, they can't work separate from each other. A lot of people when they see this, this pyramid of control and they put the Queen on the top and the Zionists and the Freemasons don't understand that the Vatican and the Jesuits and the Superior General of the, the Jesuits actually sit on top behind the scenes but they work together. Then they have, that's the crown and the, the then they have that's the crown and the, the, the elite insane families of the world who think they have better blood than the rest. And they have their think tanks 
Then they have their financial control system, world resource control, world population control, and there's a little sheep down the bottom called debt slaves. We're all debted, indebted, and we all bleed financially because they're taxing your wage. You go to work and you get taxed. Half of it goes to the government. We'll get into that a bit later. Okay, in uh, 1455, we have a testamentary trust created. The first testamentary crust, a trust in history. That was Nicholas V, Pope Nicholas V, 1455. This was, bear in mind at the time, it's only like 20 or 30 years before Christopher Columbus, Columbus sailed off to discover the Americas, right? This trust, this testamentary trust, which conveyed all of this property that the Vatican claimed, the whole world, they, claim, they conveyed it into this trust. It's the trust that claims all your real estate. You know those titles you have? You don't own it. You own nothing. You do not own a thing. Well, you can't anyway. They're molecules. They belong to the universe, <laughs> for a start. But the Vatican knows this. They know you can't own things. You can have right of use. That's all that that title means. You will never own it. Never in this system. In this system, I mean, which is about to end. This one is called Romanus Pontifex. Romanus Pontifex. This one is crown. This is where the crown originated. Remember that double crown? That's going to morph into a triple crown because there are three trusts. This is the first one. There's two more to come. See that triple crown? That's called the tiara, the papal tiara, or the trirenium, the three kingdoms. What are those three kingdoms? Well, this is one of them. This is their fictional kingdom that they created. Remember Shrek? And the king and his fictional characters, same deal, exactly the same deal. There it is in modern times. This pope wore it. The last three popes refused to wear it. And there's Pope Boniface. That's him. That's who Dante confined to the bottommost pits of hell. And he and his successor pope did what they did to the Knights Templar. Very important, because they, they stole the Knights Templar technology and corrupted it like they do with everything, for power and control. In 1481, now get this, 11 years before, Constant, uh, before uh, Columbus set sail, another trust. Now these three trusts, by the way, in the incipit of the trust, which is the introductory words of the trust, the testament, or the, the bull rather, let me, it's the bull, the papal bull, the incipit says, for a perpetual remembrance, that's trust. Right. Now, this one's called attorney, Attorney A.E., that's an A, excuse my writing. Attorney Regis, the eternal crown. This is Pope Sixtus, the sixth, no, sorry, the fourth. Pope Sixtus, the fourth. And this is the second testamentary deed, trust, deed and will, the second crown of the people, which makes people slaves. This is the Commonwealth. The crown, the Commonwealth was born here. You think these are all English things, don't you? No. The Queen serves the Pope. The Vatican is the most powerful entity on this planet, excepting this, these people of the Knights Templar, or the Temple Bar, rather, I forget the year, were granted this. This is in the city of London, the square mile. This land has no title. That is the only land in the Western Hemisphere, or the, you could say the world, because 
as you'll see, this, this system has spread its tentacles all around the planet, all around the planet, but mostly in the court systems, in the Western court systems, which I'm going to show you. So we're going to go to that now in a minute once I get off the history. So when you go to court, you will see it. You'll see it, what, who, who they are, those judges and magistrates, who exactly they serve. It's not you. <clears throat> and there's no justice. There is no justice. That's why you wonder when you see, when you hear these outrageous things that happen in, in court. People, innocent people who were speeding or something, who had some marijuana and they're in prison. My God, my God, there's some suffering in our prisons. In 15, 1531, yeah, 1531, convocation. The third trust. This one takes away your real estate. When you register with your birth certificate, that number is the number of these three Sestui KV trusts. Learn this word. That's the name of your enslavement. That, in Latin, is six. 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 There are three of them. That's six in Latin. That's six. There are three Sestui KVs. Sestui KV or Setui KV. A lot of people say Setui. <clears throat> That's the Triple Crown. They own and sit on the crown. They are the kings of these trusts which have taken away your real estate, your personal property and your soul. This is for baptism, for Catholics. That's why they want baptisms. That's why they go around converting. And that has stolen and deprived us of our real wealth. These are worth about $15 million. If you've got a birth certificate in this country, in the Commonwealth of Australia, which is registered with the Securities Stock Exchange Commission in New York, you are a shareholder. Uh, canon law, which I'm going to talk about soon, uh, was established in this country in 83 because something happened in 1975. The crown of Aragon, which was in England's hand, which is this crown, they had the crown. See, they were, they were granted, this was, this was granted to the crown of Aragon, Isabella and Ferdinand. Well, General Franco took that when he became king in 1975, went back to Spain. It was originally from, for Spain, created at that time, before Columbus went to America, and when Columbus comes back in 94, he signed the tes Tesadillos, the Tesadillos contract with the, with the King of Portugal, with the approval of Alexander, Pope Alexander, back in Rome. So they have the title for all the Americas. And they are they're just Sestui KV accounts. That's all they are, trusts. Everything is a Sestui K. Everything goes back to these, these, these trusts. Now, what I'm going to show you is when you go to court, it's trust law. They're administering these priests of Baal, of Saturn, who is Satan. And remember, as Virgil said in the, uh, in the Aeneid, we the Latins, everyone knows, are Saturn's people. Latin, L is replaced. You just take the S in, away from Saturn and you put L there. Same word. Latin is Saturn. It's the same word. L is L. That's another name for Saturn. That's why you can say Latin. But the Latin church, that's why they speak Latin. This is all Latin. And even in, you know, they know they're Latin because it's Satan's church. They dress in black. They are the grim reapers. They are reaping our souls. The souls belong to them. I saw this the other day on the, uh, on the internet. I thought I'd copy that and... Uh, and show you. There's who they are. The Grim Reaper is black. That's why they wear black. They are ecclesiastical. We'll go through that in a minute. I saw this on the internet. Isn't that appropriate? Remember the Austin Powers? One million souls. Yeah, yeah. No souls are enough. They love devastating souls, sodomizing souls. 
How much pedophilia is in this church? How much? It's coming down. It's coming down. <clears throat> the Jesuits, did you hear about this? I'm sidetracking a little bit, but um, in one of the largest settlements in the Catholic Church's sweeping sex abuse scandal, an order of priests has agreed to pay $166 million to hundreds of Native Americans and Alaska Natives who were abused at the order at the Order's schools around the US Pacific Northwest. The settlement between more than 450 victims. Imagine if you were one of them. We don't think about it. But, yeah, and how many of those people committed suicide? Those, those ones that, that, that are left to fight, if they've got any fight left in them after they've been sodomized and abused by these criminals. <coughs> and the Oregon province of the Society of Jesuits uh, anyway, they apologised. The settlement is believed to be the Catholic Church's third largest in the sex abuse cases behind the Los Angeles Diocese, which agreed to pay $660 million to 508 victims, and the San Diego Diocese, which agreed to pay $198 million to 144 victims. It's, it's just a drop in the ocean for them for all the wealth that they have, but nonetheless, it will bring them down because it's coming in crashing thundering. Why do they do that? Because they're abusers. But are they taught at priest's school to do that? Are they brainwashed to do that? It is part, part brainwashing, yes. They've been, they've been indoctrinated. They've been indoctrinated and they've been mind controlled. It's all mind control. All of this. It's all mind control. It's all filthy mind control. In that city of London, which I'm going to show you, this is what Franco Collins is talking about. There's Jerusalem, the Holy of Holies, the Middle Temple and the Outer Temple. That's what they've done in the City of London. That's the City of London. There are three cities in the world that do not... Um, well, let me put it this way. There's three cities in the world that run the show. DC, Washington, it's just a square mile, a couple of square miles. City of London, where the Temple Bar is. The Temple Bar is in there. That is the only piece of land in the world that is over and above the Vatican. Remember that? I showed you that? That's in the city of London. It has to be because this is the inner temple. It's the same as this is the New Jerusalem. That's why they sing the, jo the song about New Jerusalem, the most popular song in, in the British Commonwealth, isn't it? Because they created the New Jerusalem. They were given the New Jerusalem. There it is in the city of London. The middle temple, the, the inner temple, and that's the outer temple based on that system that the Templars brought back from Jerusalem. It's a system of, of slavery because the ones who are in the outer temple, they are the Gentiles or the Goyim or the scum of the earth. They're the ones that get taught exoteric religion. For instance, that Jesus Christ is pure history. When they were teaching Jesus Christ 2,000 years, 3,000, 4,000, who knows how many thousand years in India as Krishna, his name was Yes Krishna, and in, in Egypt as Horus, and he wasn't historical. They made it up. The Romans did that. The Julian family did that. And the Pericle, they made it up. The Romans did that. The Julian family did that. And the Piso family, this is, a, this is a guy, Roman Piso, elite. This is one of the elites of the world. This is one of the richest of these families. They invented the whole historical thing. And, 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 put it in, in, and put it into the, the Bible so that it would appear to be history so that they could keep people in the outer temple and then enslave them. This is the New Jerusalem, guys, that has enslaved us. And that's why the judges refuse to have any kind of conscience and any kind of love and any kind of justice in their courts. They know they've got no right to send little, little boys into the prison. Why do they send them to prison? Because they're getting commissions. They get $160,000 because they create what's called a constructive trust. When you go to court, they make a constructive trust. And you're going in as the beneficiary of the trust, of the Sestwi KV trust, that has stolen all of your wealth, all of it. You have nothing until we collapse the trust. And that's what Serena's going to be doing in the second half. She's going to teach how to collapse these trusts. 
This is the 666, the mark of the beast, the mark of the fool. Because if you're foolish enough as a parent to say, oh, there's my little boy, he's born, and the government says you've got to register him, and, oh, well, we'll inform. The hospitals get $2,000 fee, spot fee, for registering you. That's why the nurse is there. Are you going to register him? Yes. Register. What does register mean? Well, that's, I know what that means. That means king. You're giving over to the king. All capitals is a fiction. It's a corporation. And it's connected, it's connected to this. This is why a lot of people go to court and don't understand why they lose. They don't understand what's going on, the jargon. Well, I'm, you're going you're gonna to get that. You're going to get that now. First, I want to show you a couple of pictures. That is 1968. That's the Pope. That's Pope Pius IX. That's, a, that's an army. This is a picture that the Vatican would not like you to see. Comes out of Tony Bushby's book. He's another Australian who's written a lot about the Vatican, the papal billions. That is 1571, I believe. I don't have the information for that. I forget who was the famous paint painter. I think that's the Bay of Naples. There's 200 warships there. Do you know who owns those warships? They're on their way to fight against Turkey in 1571, an Inquisition, uh, a uh, crusade. That's the Pope's. Look at those ships. That's only a part of the Navy. That has morphed into the US Navy, the Pentagon. They're still doing it. The Inquisition's on, man. It's George Bush and his buddies. They're, they're going for the Pope. That's a sheriff. That's, an, that's a, a New South Wales sheriff. That, is, that cross is their ecclesiastical duties. They are officers of the Inquisition. This is an officer of the Inquisition, people. He's telling you. Same cross that these Christians, Christopher Columbus, when he landed on the Caribbeans, they wrote letters back to Spain saying there were three million people on this island. There's only 200 left. Because Columbus has gone mad killing people. He was murdering people left, right and centre. They were having an orgy of killing people that didn't repent and choose Christ. <clears throat> an orgy. And the Inquisition went to the American shores. That's Pope Julius being stoned. This is a famous painting, by the way. Being stoned by Matthew, Mark, Luke and John for how evil he was. Pope Julius... Uh, good old um, Michelangelo gave us a nice little picture of Pope Julius sitting on the toilet seat for how much he loved him. There's a good reason why I'm showing you all these pictures. That's what Michelangelo, that's one of his sketches, Pope Julius, for how evil he was. That is a, um, a flyer that was going around in 1501 for the same Pope, saying that he was from the devil and from Satan. Because why? Because they are. Look at them now. See those SS officers and the Vatican? Look at them blessing the killers, training them in mind control. Go, the Sestwi KV accounts need to be charged up. We need money. Look at how eager this orthodox bastard is. He's so eager to bless them. Go. He'll stay at home. Eating his bread and cheese and champagne and caviar. Yeah, no worries. Look at that. That's a famous picture. There you go. Pope Pacelli. There's a reason why I want to show you that. I want to share that with you guys. Now, let's get into this. I'm what I'm going to do now is show you how the courts work. It's all ecclesiastical. Okay, and this is, this is very sad, but we need to know this. It's cruel, it's absolutely cruel that the poor young boys that go in to court with a lawyer, the lawyer's working for the Sestwi KV accounts, the prosecution is, the clerk is, and the judge is. And you bring a lawyer with you to prove that you're a ward of the state, that you're lost at sea, so, so you need a Sestwi KV account, someone to manage your, all your wealth. They've stolen it. Um, a court room 
So let's, let's make a little courtroom here. We've got the judge here, we've got the clerk over here, and you and the prosecution, okay? Every trust has a trustee, a um, benef um, executor, and a beneficiary. Okay, that's the owner. This guy executes, sign, 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 sign. And this guy's the beneficiary. That's, that's you. You're the beneficiary of the system UK tr V Trust. Right? Now, <clears throat> why they bring you into court is because they want to create a constructive trust with the, um, the presumption, with the... Uh, the, the, knowing that you're already a slave of the, of the system by virtue of your name. That's why the judge, the first thing he says is, what is your name? For the record, can we have your name? He wants that name. The moment you give him that name and agree to be that name, you bring life to the Sestawi KV Trust and he's got you because he wants to change roles with you. The clerk here is the trustee not the judge. This guy's the administ administrator of the trust. He's just the administrator, the judge. You are the beneficiary. This guy, the prosecution, I should have put the prosecution inside the circle, is executor. I think I've confused that, but it doesn't matter. He's the executor. He's got all the liability. He's the one that created the, got the, the writ created to get you into court, the summons. Because what they want you to do is appear in court, accept that you are the name. Oh, we've found the beneficiary, right? And then he's going to swap roles with you and be the beneficiary and get you to execute your own sentence. Now, if you think I'm stretching that a little bit, basically everything, that goes on in court is the sacrament of penance. What's the sacrament of penance? We've forgotten. But these guys, <coughs> these guys here well knew what the sacrament of penance was because that's what brought them in there. The sacrament of penance is you're a dirty, rotten sinner. We're all sinners. Sin, 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 sin. But God's merciful. Oh, he's, he's lovely. He forgives. So you've got this treasury of credits up there in heaven. What we're going to do is we're going to administer those credits. We're going to administer them, and it's penance. And you pay, and the system works on the confession. It's all the confession. You go to court to confess, to confess your sins and pay for them. That's penance. Every single thing in court is, runs as a church does, and confession. And you go in there to confess and accuse yourself. Penance is a sacrament in the new law instituted by Christ, in which forgiveness... This comes from the, the, the uh, Catholic Church. Have a listen to this. This is from the... I've just ripped this off the uh, Catholic Encycl Wiki Encyclopedia on the net last night of the new law instituted... Penance is a sacrament of the new law instituted by Christ in which forgiveness of sins committed after baptism is granted through the priest's absolution to those who with true sorrow confess their sins and promise to satisfy for the same. It is called a sacrament, not simply a function of ceremony, because it is an outward sign instituted by Christ to impart grace to the soul. As an outward sign, it comprises, comprises the actions of the penitent in presenting himself to the priest and accusing himself of his sins, and the actions of the priest in pronouncing absolution and imposing satisfaction. The whole procedure is usually called, from one of its parts, confession. That's what you're doing when you go to court. I'll show you this. It's all in the wording. It's still there. It's in the wording. Look at the words, and there it is. You watch. Uh, because it is a judicial process in which the penitent is at once the accuser, the person accused, and the witness. Remember this, because that's how the Inquisition ran, and that's how courts work. 
It's exactly the same thing. It's morphed, but it hasn't changed in its nature. So you become the person accused, the accuser, and the witness. They're saying it. While the priest pronounces judgment and sentence. The judge. The grace conferred is deliverance from guilt and sin, and in the case of mortal sin, from its eternal punishment, hence also reconciliation with God, justification. That's the sentence. Finally, the confession is made not in the secrecy of the penitent's heart, nor to the layman as friend and advocate, nor to the representative of human authority, but to a duly ordained priest with requisite jurisdiction and with jurisdiction and with the power of the keys, the power to forgive sins which Christ granted to his church. Now, now I'm going to talk about another thing here, indulgences. Remember I mentioned those from the same encyclopedia. In Catholic theology, an indulgence is the full or partial remission of temporal punishment due for sins which have already been forgiven. Of course, God forgives, but you're a sinner and we'll manage that for you. That's all it is. That's all it is, guys, and they are the priests of Baal. The temple Baal ba is Baal. Baal is Saturn. It's the church of Satan. They're the grim reapers in black. Excuse me for that. In Catholic theology, an indulgence is the full or partial remission of temporal punishment due for sins which have already been forgiven. The indulgence is granted by the Catholic Church after the sinner has confessed and received absolution. The belief is that indulgences draw, indulgences draw on the treasury of merit accumulated by Christ's abundantly merit, meritorious sacrifice on the cross and the virtues and penances of the saints. They are granted for specific good works and prayers. They've monetized sin. And this was developed by the Jesuits in the 1500s with the backing of the Venetians who created the Jesuits. The Jesuits rule the world. They do. A court is an oratory. That's where you confess. Just look at these words. Have a look at these words. A clerk. What's a clerk? What does it sound like? A cleric. The judge is an ordinary. What's an ordinary? An officer of the church who by reason of office has ordinary power to execute the church's laws. That's what the judge is, an ordinary. A case. What's the case? We're going to hear a case today. Hear a case? Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. Yes, tell me what you've done. That's what it is. That's why you would never bring to life that name when you, go to, when you go to church, when you go to Bale's church, when you go to court. Cautio, which means, oh, God, it's, it's, well, it's an oratory. Writ. Is it two T's? No. <laughs> uh, got it wrong here. <laughs> Comes from... Well, there's no W in Latin. It doesn't exist. Well, it used to. It's a right. It's a religious... <laughs> comes from... Well, there's no W in Latin. It doesn't exist. Well, it used to. It's a right. It's a religious right. Because the... Um, let me say this correctly. Correct me if I'm wrong. The scribe and a notary... What's a scribe and a notary? He, he makes the writs. He puts the curse on you, the summons, whatever it is, a bill, Telstra. It's, it, has to, it comes from a writ, right? And the scrivener, scribe, the nay, from the nay Latin, is guess what? Our little friend, the indulgence. That's an indulgence. The writer of indulgences. They're telling you in your face, and we don't see it. A warrant. What's a warrant? Well, it seals the writ. It seals the writ. So it indemnifies the king and the queen from being sued if they lose. That's what a warrant is. Warrant comes from seal of the writ and is a form of indulgence. Hearing. Well, I've already gone through that. It's a confession. That's what a hearing is. Isn't this sick? Don't you think? 
uh, it's, it makes you sick. It makes you sick. And, 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 and that's what's going on. And it's run by insane people. Oh, what's sentence? It's penitence. Penance. Absolution. Prison or a fine. Uh, prosecutor. Pro se cutus. Three words. Pro se cutus. The skin. Pro self. Uh, self. Um, present. Uh, it's um, representing one's own flesh. Or a person who is claiming to be you making a self accusation. So those warrants that come to your house or whatever, um, they are prosecuting you, right? So they're claiming to be you. They're just using that name on the trust. Attorney, turn over. Attorney tells you, I turn you over. That's what it means. You bring an attorney with you. Thanks, mate. Yeah, you help me. Come on, man. Let's, let's go and see the judge. And uh, tell him what to say. Uh, you, you tell him. And guess what? You find yourself in prison and you look at your attorney and you say, well, I tried. You know, I say, they work for the same guy. They're all getting commissions. That's why, that's why the prosecution is always required to bring their checkbook to court. Because if they can't get you to swap roles with him, you become the trustee, he becomes the beneficiary, and get you to prosecute your own sentence. If they can't do that, they bear the liability. They're going surety for it. They're prosecuting. So they're bringing the liability. They're charging your trust account. So... In, in a beautiful, on, on the websites that I showed you, <coughs> on this one here, Spiritual Economics Now, you can go there to a page. It's beautiful. Please read this. This is the best five pages I think you'll ever read by Franco Collins. Right? All those websites are, are linked to my website, the top one, Universal Truth School, or you can go straight to them. But if you go here, you'll find the links. You can get to all of those. And in here is the information that Serena is going to share with you next about how to collapse these trusts and how to create ecclesiast ecclesiastical deed poles and to create a new birth certificate. That's called a live born record. Right? And I have a new trust number and I have a, 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 a universal, not a Roman date for my... Uh, birthday. Uh, anyway, we can, Serena will be making that a little bit clearer. What do you say in court? Court, who's who and what to say? This is what Frank O'Connor suggests. And that's, I'm going to finish up with that and tidy up. Serena will do her bit after we have a break and then we can do some question and answers after that. All right? And believe me, Serena's got some beautiful things to share with you because she is um, really, really leading in Victoria and, and spearheading this, this technology. So, um, but the most important thing, guys, is to get on here. There are audio files. You can listen to, there's about 16 audio files on talkshoe.com, is it? Or dot .org? It's dot .com. It, you, you'll find it, there's a link to it here in, 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 in these, there are links to it, but you can download Franco Collins' uh, audio files and learn all this. I've just been learning this in the last three months. This is what to say. We all know from our indoctrination programming and schooling that judges are impartial and have sworn an oath to this effect. This means we must, he must not favour either plaintiff or defendant, but our experience reveals that he does indeed favour the plaintiff, indicating a glaring conflict of interest. That the prosecutor, judge and clerk all work for the state, the owner of the Sestwi KV Trust. So, as the case is not about justice, it is about administration of a trust. They all represent, represent the trust owned by the state and, if we are beneficiary, the only two positions left are trustee and executor. There's only three posi positions connected to these trusts. And the state, the Vatican, owns them. So if you detect the judge's impartiality, although I doubt the case will get this far, you might want to let him know that you know this. If you consider court as entertainment and if you can stand the evil emanating from its offices, the fear, the angst, 
oozing from the walls and the treacherous atmosphere, then go. Knowing that under trust law, we cannot be trustee or executor of a trust, while being beneficiary, as that would, as that would be a conflict. The position of be beneficiary may lack clout, but the other positions hold liability. Remember, he brings the writ, he brings, he brings the case to court, the hearing, come and confess, you've been accused, talk to the judge, tell him what you talk to the priest of Baal, he's dressed in black there all for you, monetizing sin, pay, because what they do is they dip in to our Sestwi KV accounts if, because they've got our numbers. There's three numbers, birth certificate number, tax file number, and social security number. They are the three major numbers. There are other, other numbers. They're the numbers that follow you around all your life for 75 years. That's why they demand that you retire before 75, because these birth certificates, they only run 75 years. Because it's all about banking. This is also about banking, guys. Libya is one of only four or five nations on earth that still own their dollar. Thank you very much. Say no more. The Rothschilds, they want their banks, they want these Sestwi KVs going. 666, the mark of the beast. They want it all around the world, and they think they're going to bring in a new world order. This is the new world order. Because as it morphs, remember Constantine and the Julian evil, how did Julius Caesar get to power? He ran fire departments in Rome and if you didn't pay, you found that your neighbourhood would get burnt to the ground. That's how he got into power, it's mafia, it's all mafia, it's all, look, there you go, beautiful couple aren't they? That is the king of pedophiles. That is the Queen of Pirates. They've been running the Hudson Bay Company and the East India Company, selling drugs to the Chinese. They're pirates. They ran the pirates. She's the Queen of Pirates. They hire mercenaries. They hire inquisitional soldiers. These guys are dupes. They, these guys think they're doing their job and they're doing something good. They've got the afterlife to deal with after they've been persecuting people. That's the private guilds that run this from the temple bar. They are above the Vatican. Only these people, because that land was granted to them in absolute. They are the only ones in history who have that land. Therefore, they can do this. And since 1815, since the Rothschilds bankrupted the Bank of England and England and took over those private guilds, we've been under that family, Kazarian family. That's what they are. I'd just like to ask a question. I wonder if they've been introduced to these people yet. I wonder if they know that they live on the same planet. And the guy who shot this film, by the way, he went home, he was from New York. He shot this and committed suicide. That's the story. about. That's a famous picture. Because he went there and he saw that and he saw this bird is going to eat that little kid. Now they... Why are these people suffering and starving? Because this system has stolen the wealth of the whole world. And we have to wake up a few more things about what to say in court. This would be a surprise if you have to go to court. When the name of the trust, example John Doe, is called by the judge Acker administrator, ACA trustee, you can stand and ask, are you saying that the trust which we are now administering is the John Doe Trust, Your Honour? And you watch him turn white. The moment you, what's the word, um, <clears throat> in, the, in the moment you just show an inkling of that knowledge, because they are hiding this fact, they are denying that they're operating trust law. We can stand up, okay, uh, uh, this establishes that we know that the name is a trust, not a live man. What's the judge's first question? What is your name? State your name for the record. We must be very careful not to identify with the name of the trust because doing so makes us the trustee. What does this tell you about the judge? If we know that the judge is the trustee, then we know that the judge is the name. 
but only for this particular constructive trust, which is the case. Prosecution, it's a hearing, it's in the Inquisition. Now, think about all the times that the judge have become so frustrated by our refusal to admit to being the name that they issue a warrant and then as soon as the man leaves, he is arrested. How idiotic is that? They must feel foolish for saying, John Doe is not in the court, so I'm issuing a warranty, warrant for his arrest, and then the man whom they just admitted is not there is arrested because he is there. That's how it works, this personal fiction. It's disgusting. Their desperation makes them insane. They must get us to admit to being the name or they pay. Remember, he's got to bring his checkbook along, man, because he, he has to pay if he fails to shift the liability over to us and we prosecute and we sign. That's, and we, sorry, we execute our own sentence. <clears throat> Um, this is beautiful, what you're going to learn here. This is really, really beautiful. They're desperate. They must get us to admit to being the name or they pay and we must not accept their coercion or we pay because the judge is the trustee, a, pre a precarious position. The best thing to say in that case is John Doe is indeed in the court, Your Honour. Point to the judge, it is you as trustee you are John Doe today, aren't you? Why not? Why not? We have dominion. We are men and women. We're not persons. We're not. We can't keep going with, with the fiction. Why? Why would you? It's insane. During their, frust um, <clears throat> During their frustration over not admitting to being the, a trust name, the trustee and or executor of the trust, we ought to ask who they are. Before we go any further, I need to know who you are. Address the clerk of the court. The trustee for the Sestwick KV Trust owned by the state province. Are you the Sestwick KV trustee who has appointed this judge as a trustee for the Sestwick KV Trust owned by the state province? Are you the Sestawi KV trustee who has appointed this judge as administrator and trustee of the constructive trust case? Numbers. Did you also appoint the prosecutor as executor? Executor. Did you also appoint the prosecutor as executor of this constructive trust? Then point to the judge. So you are the trustee. Then point to the prosecutor. You are the executor. Are you not? And I'm the beneficiary. So now we know who's who, and as beneficiary, I authorise you to handle the accounting and dissolve this constructive trust. We have the power to do that. Dissolve this hearing. I don't want to accuse. I'm not into sin. I'm divine. I'm from heaven. One heaven. I'm a spirit. I'm not the dead. Uh, this is what they consider us. This is how they do it. Lost at sea, abandoned, filial, minor or incompetent, ward of the state, etc. Because that's why they made the trusts. They made them for the ward of the state. There's someone who's incompetent, you know, like if someone's, uh, a, 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 um, say, like a, a very severely mentally handicapped person and his parents die and his uncle steps in and says, Oi, I'll look after him, I'll look after him, everything's in trust. And because he loves him and he takes care of him. The word deed comes from the word dead. Yes. Yeah. I, I went through some words, didn't I? That was just a bunch of words, guys. It's all there. Look. You'll see it. It's the Inquisition. I'll just finish up uh, this. Um, I now claim my body, so I am collapsing the Sestawi KV Trust, which you have charged, as there is no value in it. You have committed fraud against all laws. Likely we will not get to hear that before the judge will order. Case dismissed. Or even more likely, the PE, as he clings tightly to his checkbook, will call, we withdraw the charges. You watch it and see it happen, guys. Does that really work? Yes. Oh, yes. There's hundreds and thousands of people doing this and, and getting and doing it. There's a video clip on, um, on uh, remember this. Uh, love for life dot 
Com, do you know that one? Go to it. Have a look at this guy. And, and in five minutes, he, he, the judge has walked out the door. Why does the judge walk out and have a recess? Do you know why? I'll just finish off with this really quickly. Three forms of law in the court. When you go to court and the magistrates, you get UCC. First up, commercial law. They can only fine you here. You can only get a fine. When the judge has a recess, he's not telling you what he's doing. He's changing the form of law. And you can go to prison in canon law. That's the Vatican. That's canon law. It's not common law. It's admiralty law. Admiralty law. This is the second form of law. This is the first one. The third is Talmudic. From the Bible. This gives them the priest to send this gives them the authorities, the priests of Baal, to send you to your sentence of death. Here they can send you to jail. That's why he, he runs out of court. You'll see the judge in, in that video clip on the website, loveforlife.com or dot org, whatever, you'll find it. And go down and have a look at the guy, and you'll see how the judge goes. Because he got frustrated with this guy. The the guy just refused to give him his name. He said, Are you John Doe? And he goes, I'm John. I'll repeat. Are you John Doe? He says, I'm John. Do you have a family name? He says, oh, I have a family name, but that's not important for today. John will do. I'm here to offer remedy. And the judge got so angry. He says, sit down! He's basically yelling. He's telling his dupes, his bailiffs and all his sheriffs and everything to, 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 um, to, to get him and, and throw him out of the court. And he says, don't do that. You'll be dishonouring a... Uh, a court official because he'd already given his documents to the to the uh, the bailiff and once those documents are on that bench that's it they can dishonor that and it's very very dangerous anyway the judge got frustrated and he goes we're going to have a recess and the guy says how long i haven't got all day how long are you going to be and anyway the judge opens the door and walks out just as he, he walked out he realized ah he says the judge has jumped ship because that's what this is a ship remember it's admiralty it's the law of the high seas he's in his ship he's in his boat so he, he immediately announced he said for the record the judge has jumped ship he's abandoned ship i as a sovereign in this court take authority case closed with prejudice have a nice day and just walked out okay this is the power you've got if they adjourn the case, that's fine. It stays in the same court. If the judge says we're going to have a recess, that's when you step in and you say, Your Honour, I don't consent. Because it's an offer. They're administering the trust. You don't have to go to jail. You don't have to consent. The jail is just merchandising... Uh, uh, merchandising... Um, uh, um, the warehouse where they put the goods, where they store the goods. That's all it is. You're just the goods because you are their goods. Um, so that's, that's the power you have. You don't consent. And you can always relay to the judge that if you want to have an appeal, if you say to the judge, I seek an appeal for an interlock, uh, an, I seek leave for an interlocutory appeal, on a matter of law, remember that sentence, I seek leave for an interlocutory, interlocutory appeal on a matter of law. If you l say that, then the judge is going to be very, very reluctant to let you go to appeal because then he misses out on his commission. It's all about commissions. They're getting paid and they're addicted to the payments that come from them. The, the thing is about honour. You can call the judge your honour. You know, it, it, you, because if you have more honour than the prosecution who are liars, and if you go in there honourably in every way, treat the judge with respect and you will win.